Hey everybody, this is Fran Frischella, draft expert and basketball junkie. To everybody who's watching, let's get our friends at General Manager Games the subscribers they deserve. Just press that red subscriber button and immerse yourself in sports AI through GM Games content. And on Twitter, it's GM underscore games. Let's get after it. Let's go. Louisville Cardinals, it's a nice Friday night here. Uh, good Friday night for a little bit of draft day sports. College basketball 2021. My Louisville Cardinals. Here we are in 2041. Uh, you can take a look here. I know last time at the end of the stream, we kind of took a look at uh, where we stand with this team. We got you know, pretty good looking backcourt. Some pretty good looking small forwards. Some good stuff going on on the front court, guys. It, it's going to be on this year. It's going to be on. Let's check out uh, this depth chart real quick. Sometimes I get through the recruiting and I'm so excited I blow right through the season. I don't want to mess it up here. That looks perfect. We might have set that up last time, actually. I'm perfectly happy with that. Let's take a quick look uh, at our coach. I always like to take a look at the coach before the season starts. Most of this stuff should be maxed out, but 100% uh, job security wants us to reach the Final Four, win the conference tournament. So uh, my expectations are pretty high. Uh, my athletic director, uh, his expectations are even higher. Uh, only a four-star recruit, so that should be easy enough. Maintain school prestige. 20 wins should be fairly easy. Uh, and then we've either got to either maintain that school prestige or win the conference tournament or reach the Final Four. Uh, anything's possible this year. We do have a young team. What's up, Chris? Glad to have you, buddy. Uh, we do have a, a youngish team. You know, most of these players that are going to be playing are guys that I brought in. So take a quick look at that. Cherry's a sophomore. Uh, Joey Shannon, a sophomore. Chris Wright's a junior. White's a freshman. Alexander's a junior. Uh, and then Williams is a senior, and Tyler's a sophomore. So a senior, a couple of juniors, and then a lot of lowerclassmen. So, you know, we'll build that out as we go forward. We'll try to get a little bit more depth so that we're starting, you know, three and four and five upperclassmen instead of like two. But uh, let's jump over into some recruiting here. Let's take a look. I'm not sure how many scholarships I've got right off the bat. Four scholarships, so a whole lot of recruiting to do this year. So as far as what we need, we've got a couple of young, young point guards. A couple of young shooting guards as well. So we really just need one guard. We need a small forward. And then a couple of big men. Hopefully Alexander will still be around. And you never know, Tyler, Tyler was very highly rated, right? So, I mean, he's one of those that could leave. I hope that he doesn't. What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. Trying to push forward in this college basketball 2020 game. Trying to get these Louisville Cardinals to the Final Four. Trying to hang that banner. Uh, so, yeah, we need a guard. We need a small forward and a couple of guys on the inside. Doesn't really matter which guard. So, you know, we can, we can recruit at every position. Uh, we just want to focus a little bit heavier on the inside than on the guards. So... We will go, yeah, all regions is fine. Let's get the full recruit list. We'll just go position by position and see what's up. What's up, Beach Bear? Glad to have you here, buddy. Bree's having trouble with pro basketball 21. That's not any good. What's the air? Ooh, look at this. Quite a bit of interest here. So, wow, point guards... Only three five-star point guards. It's kind of interesting. It seems like there's usually a whole lot of talent at that position. Uh, but then you look, especially at the assists, a couple of guys well down here, uh, the only ones really getting those double-digit assists. Marshak looks pretty good, honestly. 18 points and 10 assists a game in my region. Um, but let's fill this out. Perfectly happy to add Brown 
he doesn't have interest, but the 2.8 GPA, he'll be fine. We don't want no JUCOs. Uh, I'm not going to gamble on a international like that. This will be an interesting one because I've always talked, if they've got interest at the start, I've never seen them not qualify, so this will be an interesting test case. I think that's nine, so we'll throw on... We'll just throw on the next one on the list. Huh. Yeah, that definitely sounds like an interesting issue. Got some talent here at shooting guard. Top player in the nation, top rated player in the nation at least, Anthony Harris. Lamont Map coming out of Florida, the pipeline state. Uh, I'm I'm just not going to go after the internationals, honestly. Don't get a ton of good information on them. <laughs> Train it up on the Pro Basketball 21. Pro Basketball 21 just came out today, guys. If you're waiting for it, you know, you can see it in chat. Anybody that's watching, I'm sure you're getting emails from Wolverine and all that good stuff. But uh, Pro Basketball did come out today. If you're interested, get over there. Uh, at the very least, you ought to be uh, grabbing a free demo, free trial. See, if, see how you like it, uh, if you've got any interest in it whatsoever. Oh, the top power forward in the country, a 2.3 GPA. See, that's I won't go there. No, thank you. 3.9, you're good. 2.3, you're fine. No JUCOs. 2.5 with no interest scares me. All right, let's round it out with some centers here. One point nine. Uh, something tells me he's not going to qualify. Oh, the centers are a little bit spotty. Oh, that should be it. Yep. If you're adding people to the list and you get that screen, that means you are full. So let's take a look here at our list. Uh, we can just bounce over to all positions and come on down. I'm practicing. Probably fix first. Oh, you're gonna start a series. You're gonna uh, you're gonna be streaming or just doing like videos and editing and all that good stuff. I will tell you, like streaming. There's I feel like there's less that you have to put into it to put it together, uh, but at the same time, like you're alive, so you don't have a whole lot of margin for error and fixing mistakes and that sort of thing. But the expectations are different, so it's not that bad. Ooh, you're going to do a link league test. But now, if you're doing the link, the league link test, do you have to wait for College Basketball 21 to come out, or is it compatible with the older versions? I desperately need a second computer monitor that I can have up here and like keep up with chat so I don't have to be looking down to the side all the time. I think I'm going to ask uh, Santa Claus to hook me up with that. What kind of are you going to have any kind of like challenge when you do your pro basketball breeze? Like, you know, take over the worst worst to first or uh, I know some people have done like historical mods and try to go back and win certain player championships or whatever. Uh, any ideas for when you finally start it up, how you're wanting to do it? All right, get the save here after that first week of recruiting as we move on into July. Start getting some camp information, start burning through these guys, hone in on those prospects, and then see if we can't get into a little bit of season play. Oh, 
All right, let's keep at unlocking some of these top pitch areas. Get these top guys unlocked uh, because they're they're generally pretty safe bets uh, that they're going to be very talented. They're going to do well at camps. They're going to be good targets. So if we're spending any time early, we do it up here. <laughs> yeah, we're definitely doing the college basketball 2020 tonight. We'll get around to some other stuff. Got a feeling there's a whole lot of content on the way uh, in the next couple of months. So hopefully we get some more information shortly. Uh, all right, we can go see how these visits went. I mean, they had to be all right. Enjoyed it, appreciated it. So no awesome time, that's all right. Get the national camp information. Wilmot map, that shooting guard from Florida. Looking solid so far. And Nate Gaskins from Indiana. See what the East Coast Jam looked like. James Brown. Okay. John Carter, Nathan Reeves, Aaron McClendon. A lot of big men here. And then William Murphy out of Michigan. The uh, Midwest. Midwest looks like a huge region for these top players this year. Go ahead and get the Las Vegas camp going. Yeah, Breeze, that was the whole point, buddy. <laughs> I'm a Louisville Cardinal fan, and I'm with the Cardinals. That's sort of how it sort of how it was uh, meant to work. That's why I said it would be cool to end the stream with Louisville. Um, Beach Bear, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's a lot harder to rebuild a, a bad team in a good conference because you're going to be losing all those conference games. So, I mean, it's but at the same time, it's all about what the expectations are when you get to the school and how quickly you can you can get yourself set up for that. So, like. Um, you know, if you go into a, a truly awful team, uh, take Northern Kentucky for example, you know, your expectations are going to be like win 10 games a year and you can usually do that. And then you can get your recruiting set up. You can get your coaching style set up and, and build that. And now it takes longer because you're in a lower prestige conference and you just don't have as many opportunities to increase your school's prestige. But when you go like when I did with Nebraska and they were they weren't wanting anything crazy just like 15 win seasons and that sort of thing but then like the athletic director would give me 10 road games in the out of conference I couldn't win anything in conference because the teams were so good uh, and it was just a really bad situation so it all depends on what the expectations are to be honest got another summer camp don't need to recruit players here did I miss something Yeah, I gotta host some more guys. Let's see here. Where is? Hold on. There we go. Definitely want to bring him in. Oh, Lamont Map. Uh, we will do this. Also, James Brown was definitely in there. Thing was Bayless in there. He was MVP and top ten. So yeah, we'll go. We'll go check out Bayless as well. You would seize your team. Well, you know, it's one of the weirdest things. I've thought about being UNC a, a handful of times on here because, like, for for all the top teams, most of them, you know, they pop up and do well here and there. Like, UNC never seems to do that well when the computer is controlling them. So, a lot of times, UNC's been a team that I've thought about jumping in and grabbing and, you know, winning games with them like they ought to, uh, whether I'm a UNC fan or not. I mean, I do like them, uh, just not as much as Louisville. 
So I don't mind occasionally uh, playing as them. My biggest thing is I just don't like having to play against Louisville every year. So if I'm if I'm not Louisville in a save, I tend not to be another ACC team. Uh, not that I never have. It's just sort of how it tends to go. Let's unlock some information on this old man. Oh yeah, you gotta love the that UNC color scheme, right? That powder blue or whatever it is that they got going on, whatever you call it. Everybody knows what it is. It's such an awesome co uh, color for a college team. I got no idea about Dropbox, man. Chris might know, though. All right, just trying to get familiar here with all the Nate Gaskins again. Was he the one that was like a 1.9? I bet he was. Bucky Calhoun. Uh, let's see here. Where's Gaskins at? No interest. 2.3. So yeah, if he didn't have interest and he's a 2.3, he's not going to qualify. So... Uh, he can be top five all he wants. He's not getting any interest over here. All right, we got all of our visits. <coughs> Excuse me. We got all of our visits. We got all of our scouting live. Let's go ahead and advance it here. Uh, we ought to have a dead period. That's fine. Is there anybody in here that we want to... Unlock some pitch areas. Calhoun was good. John Carter. Hardworking kid. Hasn't got to his camp yet. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm not going to waste time with the phone calls this week. Let's bounce it ahead, get our results out of Memphis, and then pick out who our actual targets are so we can unlock pitch areas and get moving through this save here tonight. Uh, so we'll get both these camps gone and then we'll pick targets so map enjoyed it that's good and he is the MVP of the Memphis Hoops Summit so Lamont map top five at Indy MVP of Memphis out of Florida where we've got a pipeline uh, that certainly seems like that ought to be the guard that we choose to offer here I don't see any reason it would be anyone else yeah there's some guys maybe ranked a little bit higher but plus a guy like this he did so well in the camps plus he's down in that like 20 to 25 range where you're probably looking at a guy you're going to get more than one year out of. You know, hopefully this is a two, three, even four-year player. So uh, that's the guard that I want to grab. Top five at yeah, top five at Indy MVP there. His parents aren't crazy about us. That's all right. We're number three on his list. He's very interested in playing time. Now that could hold us back a little bit because we do have a pretty good guard already, and that is his big-time main interest. But that's the best guy available. That's who we're going to go after. Um, if we got to go elsewhere, we will adjust as we move forward. Attitude and discipline problems. No, 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 no. Not if you're coming here. Absolutely not. Easily in the top five at Indy. And a hardworking kid. Now that is what we're talking about. And again, in that 15 range, like he's still liable to go one and done. But you can sneak two, sometimes three years out of these guys. Uh, what was, yeah, let's, let's scout him live, let's go, let's host him, let's dial him up, unlock these pitch areas, check it out, oh, he already told us about academics, what about your parents, man, all right, we're on the list, there's a few schools ahead of us, all right, so there's our small forward, we got that figured out, 
Simon Bean. Huh. Uh. What is this guy doing? Just not going to any camps at all? He must have gone to East Coast. But we went to all the regionals, so he must have gone to East Coast and then not gone to regionals. Lonnie Davey. Let's see. Let's see if he was top five at uh, East Coast. John Carter, Nathan Rees, no. John Carter, though, who is right there. All right, we're not very high on his list. But I'm feeling him the most, I think. What else we got? What else we got? No problems with injuries. Oh, top five at Indy. All right. We're always down for a guy that's top five at Indy. I'm sorry. It's just how I roll. Uh, I think Lamont Mapp is the next Donovan Mitchell. That's why I'm so down to grab him. But you never know. Uh, Shannon, Joey Shannon could be as well. So we'll see. All right. So he's in a location, conference, prestige, facilities. Uh, yeah, we can still make that work. Hold on. Did we not offer? This was our offer, the one that we wanted to offer, right? Don't forget to offer. All right, we did offer map. Now let's see if we can grab ourselves a center. We know James Brown was doing well at camps. Uh, I guess it was the East Coast that he did well at. We can check out the others. Top 10 at Indy, MVP at Vegas. And he's into coach discipline, which we have maxed out. And he's in a school prestige, which we know is solid. Brown's the better rebounder. Although Bayless, better blocker, a little quicker hands. Let's see here, Bucky Calhoun, my word. He puts all together, doesn't he? He's the only top 25 at Indy, top 5 at Chicago. Uh, so all about the same... Give or take about the same length. Calhoun's a little bit bigger. These two guys are definitely high rated defensively. Scoring, passing. Athlete, athlete James Brown has is the best athlete. None of them are in our region. Omar Harris is actually the only one in our region. He's a 4.0 kind of guy, and he's got no interest. All right. Let's just offer the, the man. Look, you want to win championships, you got to get the man. I think James Brown might be the man. He's, the, he's an athlete. He's a scorer. He's a little bit more of a scorer than these other guys. A little bit higher rated. A little bit better. Uh, he's just a little bit better. So that's what we're going to do. That's who we're going after. Oh. No, I'm not interested in you. You, we've already talked to. We've already got the info. So we got our targets. Let's burn through this. All right. We can check out the inbox. What I'm going to do here is we're going to pop over here. We're just going to go through, we're going to host three guys each week, but I'm going right through into the in-home visits because I'm not screwing around with recruiting all night. We've got some games to see. <laughs> we got games to watch. Got the offers out. I think we could compete given 
you know, our coaches' abilities, Louisville's conference prestige, school prestige, all my coach discipline, all that stuff. We should be able to compete with anybody in the nation on this recruiting difficulty level, so I'm not going to screw around and waste a bunch of time on this. Got a little bit of PB21 uh, troubleshooting chat here broke out in the middle of the Twitch stream. That's all right. We're about to get some games going. Can't wait to see Cherry in his second year. Alexander and Wright going into their junior years. I didn't recruit either of them, but they're both very solid players. No, oh, you're good. <laughs> you're good. The recruiting is always a little bit slow anyway. We've we've identified our targets. We're continuing to bring people in on visits, but it doesn't really get started until uh, until we get to the in-home visits and the commitments. So feel free, troubleshoot all you like. We're gonna get there. We're gonna bring in all of our targets, all of our targets. And then we're going to bounce into these games. Look, I mean, we got so much budget. We're just blowing it wherever we want. We can't get rid of it. I bought all kinds of crazy reports this year. I probably got gold, like gold reports on internationals, if I had to guess. And I'm not even recruiting internationals. I think I stuck one, maybe two of them on a the list. You can see Anon down there from Turkey is on a list. Uh, but you just don't get as much feedback on those guys. So I like to use them as like sort of backup options if I can't get, uh, like, the players I get more information on are obviously the top targets, but then if I if I miss on them, that's when I'll fall back on the internationals. So, here we are on September 4th. We've got all of our offers out. Last round of hosting. We can go ahead and advance and see if anybody uh, commits without letting us in the door. Or maybe they commit to us without letting anyone else in the door. You never know. It can go both ways. Yep, it happened to us. We lost somebody. Who was it? Oh, it must have been Osler, right? I'm pretty sure we offered Osler. Mm mm. Who we offered power? Oh, no, no, no. It was Larkin committed to Syracuse. That's who we offered in. He chose to go elsewhere without even talking to us. What a jerk. All right. All right. We can deal with that. Whew. Worley had an awesome time. Anderson, an awesome time. Brown. Carter. Oh, look at that. Chris Wright, Ailes Cherry, and D'Antonio White. All nominated for the Norton. D'Antonio White. He's not even a starter for us. That's the freshman small forward we brought in. Interesting. A lot of guys had good visits. That's good. We need to go grab another big man. All right, back to the power forwards. Ooh, the big Turk committed to the Spartans. All right, so Simon Bean... He wasn't bad. I mean, he's top 25 at Indy, top 5 at Memphis. Uh, he, he's just he's probably a one and done. I don't know how good he is exactly. Here's a hard-working kid. I'm pretty sure John Carter. And hopefully Michigan State's not offering again because that was who was number one. Uh, let's, let's double-check this. I think John Carter was top 5 at East Coast Jam. Let's see here. National Camp Recaps. John Carter. Yeah. We're going to offer Carter. Uh, he is outside of region. But got a good feeling. Hopefully Michigan State doesn't offer him. They've already got a non. Hopefully we can bring him in. All right. So he wants to hear about location. Yeah, well, let's let's talk about school school prestige, or yeah, school prestige. That sounds good. 
Better than location. I do not want to talk to you about location. I don't really want to talk with you about it either. We can talk about conference. Oh, not conference prestige. An ACC team can talk about conference prestige pretty much any time you're not going up against the Big Ten. But we're going up against nothing but the Big Ten here. Uh, so let's talk about school prestige again. All right. As for Porter, school prestige, location, and facilities. School prestige it is. And for Lamont Map, who is actually the target I would prefer. We're going to talk about playing time. I'm not sure how he'll take that. Uh, sometimes I don't know exactly how the how the behind the scenes stuff goes when you've got like these one and done type of players that are already playing for you. Like if if these guys can if they take into account that they might leave or if they don't, I have no idea. But that's what we're going to do for the first week. Let's see how this works out. All right, let's see how this first week goes. If we just get map, I'll be happy. Map and one big guy, and it doesn't have to be the first week, as long as we get map and one big guy. There's map. We didn't lose anybody. That's good to see. So that means we also brought in Porter. So we've got two small forwards already on the Norton list, and we just added Brett Porter, who's going to be another ridiculously talented small forward. So I've got it. I can't lie. I know I've talked about it before. Small forward is always the position I have the most trouble bringing in. Uh, so it looks like right out of the gate here with Louisville, we're busting, the, busting that down, uh, throwing it by the wayside. Uh, because Brett Porter is going to be a card, uh, followed up by a couple, you know, a couple of small forwards that we've already got on the roster. So Carter is still out there. We can still go out and talk to him. Um, yikes. I mean, we can at least talk about location. It's not like we're Hawaii or anything. Let's also start talking to Simon Bean, though. I mean, Bing could be good. He'll probably only be around a year. But we can at least try to get onto his list here before we have to start diving down to P Pat Hope. Maybe that is, uh, maybe the name means something there. All right. Come on, James. We, we're on the list. We're not at the top, but we're on the list. So that's all we want to see here is a little bit of progress. Uh, how is Harris? No, not good. So we're going to see if we can't get on to Bucky Calhoun's list. All right, so there's those four visits. I... I I don't recruit the, the foreign guys. Uh, I'll usually, to be honest, I couldn't say whether the reports are accurate or not because I don't have enough experience actually recruiting them and bringing them in to compare uh, the reports to how they are once they actually get there. All right, so preseason, we've got a away game at Minnesota. Uh, let's get somebody decent at home. Uh, we can bring in Villanova. So we should already play Kentucky. Should. Yeah, we already got Kentucky. Let's add Villanova in there. So that'll be a couple of good games. Ah, lost Brown to Notre Dame. Calhoun to Duke. So we s totally struck out there at center. Let's hope this power forward committed. Come on. No, he did not. All right. Still got some work to do. We still need ourselves a big man. So let's see if either of these guys are worth going after. He's decent at Indy Elite. Where'd he go? Nebraska? Tremendous work ethic. Top 25 at Houston. So yeah, this guy's worth going after for sure. Talk up to conference prestige here. That's fine. That's what he wants to hear about. 
haven't even hosted them yet that was a mistake and at power forward do we have anything left all right so bean ended up going to arkansas john carter we've still got a shot at yes and who else lonnie davy not a lot of interest blah 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 not on the list nah let's unlock Davy and, and make a visit here and see if we can make a little bit of inroads just trying to get a, a second option going on here because we're still only fifth on uh, John Carter's list so he is in the school prestige There's one. Davy we're visiting. Carter we're visiting. Marshall we're visiting. And is this one? Didn't stand out at Indy. Decent at Chicago. Eh. And what was Hope? decent and big up so averaging 15 and 12 out of the America East averaging 16 and 5 yeah we're gonna go for Pat Hope anytime a big man's only averaging 5 or 6 rebounds I'm like are you kidding me All right, so he wants to hear about location and then playing time. Yeah, we can talk about playing time with him, I think. Because uh, I, th I think our starting power forward should be a, at least a junior, if not a senior. Let's see how this goes. I really only need one big man. Just give me one. Really like to get John Carter. Come on. Let's go, John. Commit time. Come to the Ville. Come to the Ville. L's up, baby. L's up, baby. Yeah! John Carter coming to the Ville. Love it. All right, so we got Carter. Now we just need a center. Nice. So this recruiting class is going to be solid as could be. If we can add Marshall to it, that's great. If we can't, we can always roll this scholarship over into next year. It's not a problem. It's really not. Let's go in here talking about conference prestige, though. Yeah, we're, we're filling up this roster with absolute elite players. So, I mean, we're off and running this year. Uh, but, uh, obviously, <laughs> we're, we're just reloading. There's really no turning back here. Uh, we'll be reloading. We should be. If we're not competing for a Final Four this year, we certainly will be by next year. And then every year after that. So we'll just see how long it takes us to get to Title Town here. Maybe just this. Maybe right away. I could do. I could do with that. Oh, yeah, seeing Duke lose, seeing UK lose, absolutely beautiful. Uh, Villanova, I don't uh, – I've enjoyed watching Villanova play over the years. Uh, I've, I've liked their coach. I like uh, the team they had. What was the team they had with, like, four kind of swing guard kind of players and a power forward? Uh, made it, like, all the way to the Final Four. I think Alan Ray was on that team. Uh, I can't remember who else was on that team, but I kind of liked them. But they are Wildcats, so that leaves a sour taste in my mouth for sure. Do not care for Wildcats under any circumstances. I'd love to see that center uh, commit here before the season actually gets going. And we can take a look at the recruiting class overall.
There it is. Yeah, baby. Take a look at this recruiting class. We needed a guard. We needed a small forward. We needed two big men. Wrapped it up. Three in the top 25. Chris Marshall straggling in at number 66. 10th overall center. Did just fine in camps. All these guys are in the top 10 of their positions. I think Lamont Mapp is probably the star of this class. Three five-star guys, one four-star guy. So, like, seriously, even if the team that we had right now lost everything, I think that these four guys by themselves would at least be a top 25 team next year. So add in everything we're going to have coming back. We're absolutely stacked. Um, that's what we're doing. Oh, Villanova hit a game-winning shot against UNC in the national championship. Yeah, I can see why you'd be better then. That makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, those buzzer beaters are always the worst. I'm just glad, like, I was too young uh, back in, what was it, like, 84? I think it was 84 that Arkansas, U.S. Reed, hit a, like, three-quarter length shot to knock Louisville out of the, if it, if it wasn't the Final Four, it was the Elite Eight. Uh, so, at least I think that it was. Like I said, you know, I was barely even born at that point. But, <laughs> you just, it's like you, you get traumatized by proxy. <laughs> All the other Louisville fans talking about it just make me feel terrible about it. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but that was a heck of a team. Louisville had crazy teams in the early 80s. Championship runs every year. Started off here with a 26-point win. Right, and Shannon leading the way. Good looking start there. Here, here come your Tar Heels against the Spiders. I didn't catch who won there. But anyway, you can see we, we started off ranked number five in the country. So we'll see how that holds up as we go through. I would imagine that's probably going to be in the ballpark. Now we got a little bit of a preseason tournament here. Uh, so maybe we can add, you know, I, I added a, a game in the at a conference schedule. Uh, just to juice it up a little bit, we already had Kentucky, we added Villanova, uh, but we could get another decent game here in this non-conference tournament. So let's see what we get. Uh, 23 points there, Wright, Tyler, and Shannon leading the way. We ought to, Most of these tournaments are at least two, if not three games, so we'll see if we can't get uh, a little bit more competition. Mm. Creighton will be a good team. They're always pretty good in this game. So you can see they're 2-0 and on the season already. Let's see if we can keep it undefeated in 2041. So far, so good. A big win. Same three guys, Wright, Shannon, Tyler. If that keeps up, we'll be solid. The only thing we'll have to worry about then is probably Brandon Tyler going pro. But, uh, you know... It, if he, if he leads us to the promised land, one and done's all we need. Here come our letters of intent. Hopefully we got four of them. Ooh, that looks like a good game. All right. Class is signed, sealed, delivered. Look at Tulane. My legacy in Tulane. It's a soft drink, Chris. I wish. Ah, oh, Tulane fell to the Fighting Irish. All right. So, Louisville and the Arizona State Sun Devils in the whatever this is tournament. Let's see. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Oh. 20-point win, leading the way is Brandon Tyler yet again. We took a top-10 team on a neutral court game and blew them out of the building. This team is for real, guys, and it's scary. It's real, and it's scary. Oh, I'm pumped up now. Let's get it cracking. The Louisville Cardinals get those L's up. Rub the Cardinal for good luck, whatever you got to do. Now, 
Now we head on the road to play Minnesota. So, a uh, top 10 game on a neutral court, we win by 20. What can we do on the road against Minnesota? The Cardinals and the Golden Gophers in Williams Arena. 40 minutes of round ball action. And, ah, oh, fall. We lose by 12. It looked like, I didn't see Tyler on the list that time. Looks like the freshman might have had a little bit of foul trouble there. So Tyler's been leading the way night in, night out. Here we go on the road, and freshman turns into a freshman. Gets in some foul trouble. Only plays 18 minutes. Only scored three and was actually minus 17 during his time on the court. David Williams, Joey Shannon, the only starters, positive on the plus minus there. Uh, so, tough game up in Minnesota. Actually led at the half. Uh, got blown out in the second half. Williams? I need to look at the power forward situation here. Okay, David Williams over Jason Alexander. The senior over the... Eh, yeah. Okay, I guess. We can let it slide. I was just thinking Jason Alexander was one of those guys that when we got here was a freshman and was really highly rated. So, uh, But Williams has been playing well the whole time, I believe. So we're not going to change anything after a loss on the road to a top 15 team. That sort of thing happens. We will survive. We will fight on. And uh, I'm ready to see what we do against Villanova and Kentucky. Oh, so now we got a not top 25 team on the road. We'll see how their season's going so far. You can't always tell with the early season rankings. They're only 0-1, so there's no telling how good this team is or is not. Uh, anything could happen here. Hopefully we win. Oh, we lost. But like I said, it's not a terrible surprise because you don't really know what Alabama is yet. Uh, you're on the road against a, a big you know, Power 5 team. That can happen. So we drop back-to-back -back games. Had the hot start and now fall down to five and two, four and two. We're at four and two. Uh, I think it's definitely a shot at a Final Four season. Yeah, uh, Cherry, the point guard. You know, I would like to see a little bit more out of him. But Tyler, the big man, certainly seems like he's legit. Uh, Chris Wright, now in his junior season, certainly seems like he's legit. So all we really need to do is get enough out of Cherry at the point. Uh, we'll we'll see how it goes through the out of conference. Uh, hopefully we can get back on a winning track here against Colorado in the Yum Center. Uh, so I believe, you know, we certainly have a shot. Excuse me, we certainly should have a shot at the Final Four. Uh, anytime you beat a top ten ranked team on a neutral court by twenty, uh, you've got a pretty solid team. And here we go. Back in a big way, Shannon Wright, and there's Cherry. See, that's the, the only thing that worries me is Cherry, even in a game where he's one of our top three performers, eight points, three blocks. Uh, so, you know, still a sophomore, uh, but of course so is Joey Shannon, and he's performing just fine. So we'll play through the out-of-conference. We'll check in on how Cherry's doing, uh, and, and we'll see how it's going from there. Uh, if we can get him up and running, it certainly should be a, a Final Four type season. Otherwise, it might be one of those disappointing, like, seems like everything's going right and you're a, a two or three seed and, and you bow out in the Sweet 16 or the Elite Eight or something like that. But uh, just need to get the point guard position moving here. <clears throat> so here comes Villanova undefeated now coming in. So if you want to find out whether or not it's a Final Four season, uh, this is the kind of game where... It should be either we win by 5 or 10, or it's extremely close. If Villanova comes out of here with a big win, we're not as good as I think we are. But Villanova undefeated on the season, coming into the yum. Absolute primetime game here on a Saturday afternoon in the cold December 3rd of 2041. The fake Wildcats and the Cardinals. The Cardinals prevail! Yes, they do. Corey Harrington coming in with a little something there. I believe that's our uh, freshman point guard. So, uh, definitely a bright spot there. But that's a nice uh, seven-point win uh, against, you know, the number one team in the nation, undefeated team. So, yeah, this is certainly the type of team that, 
that can make a run at a Final Four. I, I don't think it's quite to a national championship team yet, but it's certainly a team that can make a run at a Final Four. If the matchups are right, uh, if you know we don't get a weird injury or uh, we can't have Tyler get in too much foul trouble. But if we avoid all that, we'll be all right. Yeah, number one team in the nation. Nice little seven-point win, but it was at home. So, you know, put that on a neutral court, that's a toss-up, and at their place, they probably beat us pretty handily. So, The Buffalo Bulls, not to be confused with the Buffalo Bills, the Bulls coming in to play the Cardinals. 14-point win, right Tyler Shannon. That, that, that right Tyler Shannon trio. <clears throat> uh, get the feeling you're going to get tired of hearing me say those names before the stream is over. This was right Tyler Shannon almost every night. At least so far, you know, through, what, nine games. Uh, I think those have been our top three performers in at least five of the nine All right, so here we go on the road to Arkansas. Now, you know, I was saying before, road games against Power 5 teams, they can be iffy, but Arkansas is 2-5 and five on the year. This looks like a bad team. Headed down to the Bud Walton Arena, and we should take care of business here. Uh, this is where we need to see we need to see those freshmen have a decent game on the road. Yeah, 22 points. Tyler Shannon and Cherry. So uh, I was a little bit worried about him, but here comes Ailes Al Cherry. 12 oh, what was that? We had a red message. I don't, did not see if it was an injury or an incident. Hopefully it was an incident. No, it was an injury. To Chris Wright. All right, mild concussion. He's all right. He'll be fine. How much is White getting to play? Only eight minutes a game. He was on the Norton list in the preseason. We're only giving him eight minutes a game. That's not right. So Cherry here, I mean, you can see four assists, almost four turnovers a game. That's not really getting it done. Harrington not doing any better. Neither of them scoring a ton, although Harrington scoring more per minute, I suppose. Much better field goal percentage, much better three-point percentage. So that's something to keep an eye on, certainly. Joey Shannon doing well. Chris Wright's playing well. Tower getting close to averaging that double double. All right, so what I want to do is see if we can get D'Antonio White some more playing time here. So as of right now, he's only backing up the small forward position. We're going to let him back up the, the two as well, and then we're going to let the AS set the matrix. What in the world did it just do? It still doesn't have him playing any small bit shooting guard. All right, the AI does not want to set the matrix in a decent way, so we're going to have to do it for them. All right, so that gets White 16 minutes. Keeps Harrington at 10. Alexander's getting 14. And then just, oh, we don't even need to do that. How about that? So we're really only playing, got a nice tight eight-man Eight-man rotation going. Oh, glad to hear it, Brees. I'm sure they're updating like crazy and fixing things like crazy on release day. You know, when you when you go from when you go to the re actual release, you get so many more people uh, in there poking around. Uh, you got to clean up a little. It happens with every single game at launch. Every game from every game developer forever. <laughs> launch day, you always got to clean up. 
All right, so eight and two. We did a little bit of work on our lineup there. Now we got Kentucky coming in. They were actually number thirteen in the preseason. They're three and three so far on our home court. We need to run them out of here. I'll take it. Fourteen points. Uh, Tyler Shannon and Wright <laughs> once again. Moves us on to nine and two. I don't know how much more we have in the out of conference, but we're looking good so far. Nine and two. Uh, everything that we want to do this season is definitely at, still possible. We lost those back to back road games against Alabama and Minnesota. But other than that, this has been a very good looking uh, out of conference season. So now we just got to see what we can do in the ACC. And it always gets interesting. Conference play is always where you find out what you're made of. Ah, oh, no, Breeze, don't let the airs come back. No. Once you fix it, it's got to stay fixed. I'm sure they'll get to it. I'm sure, I'm sure it'll get fixed soon, buddy. I don't think I've ever had any type of error with a, a draft day sports game that didn't get fixed in about a a day or less. If I've sent the files through. Yeah, if I don't send the files through and they, I don't give them what they need, sometimes it's a problem. There's Auburn looking solid. So we're just leaving a wake of success behind us. Now we're headed down to Baylor. Let's see what we can do here. The Bears and the Cardinals. 9-2. and two. They're 8-2, and two, so they're having a decent year. They're not ranked. Uh, but again, it doesn't mean all that much early. This is going to be a tough game. Five points, but we pulled it out. Jason Alexander with a nice little double-double there. So that's good to see. Coming off the bench with the double-double, leading the way. Uh, and we move on to 10-2. and two. So that's a, that's a good win. That's a really good win. I don't know how they'll end up the season, but uh, they were 8-2. They were and two. And we're going on the road with a, still a relatively young team. And we're only starting one senior. Playing a lot of freshmen and sophomores out here. I think we might hang. I don't know if we hang a banner and get a ring or not. I, I don't think. But, you know... Going back and looking at the rosters we've had at the past couple of schools, because we've had, now after I left Auburn, they won a championship. After I left Tulane, they won a championship. Uh, the last teams that I had at both of those schools, I thought were better than the teams that ultimately won it. So, who am I to say? You, know, you get out, oh, here we go, starting off conference play. Duke coming in to play us at home in Louisville, and we take care of the Blue Devils. Tyler Shannon and Williams that time, stepping in for right. Uh, but, you just get into this tournament and see what happens. You know, we definitely have the players that can step up. Uh, so let's just see what happens. I think Shannon, Wright, and Tyler obviously are uh, are our big three. And then we've got you know, Williams and White and Harrington that can pop in there behind them and on any given night step up and be the man. So... You know, let's see. Maybe they can do it. Maybe they can do it. I'd be interested to see once we get a couple more games in here how White, uh, how his performance has changed uh, getting the additional minutes. This is a bad Clemson team. <laughs> there was, so speak of the devil, there was uh, D'Antonio White, or D'Antonio White maybe. Uh, anyway, White pops into the top performers there, so we up his minutes, and within two or three games, he's rewarding us for it uh, by jumping up into our top three performers. So, uh, you know, a guy that was on the Norton list in the preseason, he's probably not going to end up there because he is playing limited minutes for us behind Chris Wright, the junior, uh, behind uh, Joey Shannon, the sophomore shooting guard, but definitely a lot of talent, you know, and that's a good problem to have. It kind of reminds me, look, if you're still in the stream, uh, that UNC, was it UNC that had like the sixth man? They've had a sixth man a couple of times, I feel like, that's just been crazy, like NBA type talent. 
So I think that's what we've got here. We've got a, a little bit of an older team, so he's not really starting, but he's still extremely talented. So now we got NC State. Nice little top 25 matchup here. We're at home. We should take care of business, and we do. By 16, Williams, Tower and Wright. So David Williams, the senior there, stepping up. Uh, leading the way against the Wolf Pack. Bringing Louisville to 13 and 2. So, folks, uh, let's see. 13 and 2, we're into January. 3 and 0 in conference. Number 2 in the country. Man, it looks good. It's hard not to get too excited. When you're playing this well, when you're ranked this high, it's hard not to get too excited. I'm trying to stay grounded. I really am. But I. Whew. I mean, we're just set up, man. It, this is so much different, even than Auburn. Like, at Auburn, I came in and recruited a, a couple of those guys that really led us forward. Here, I just walked in to Alexander and to Wright, which was great. And now we've filled in some really super talented freshmen and sophomores. And uh, one of the best teams in the country, certainly. So it's just a matter of time before we hang a banner, before we... Uh, Polishing up that ring. I get one of those big old honking rings. Number two, Louisville Cardinals headed to play the Virginia Cavaliers on the road. Uh, road game in conference can be tough. They're a bad team. Woo, we squeak it out, but a win's a win. A win is a win. That's all that we needed to do. Even a bad team at home, they can they can scare you. Uh, but we pulled it off. We're 14 and 2. Moves us to 4 and 0 in the conference. Let's take a quick look. It's early in the conference season, but let's take a quick look at conference standings just to see uh, what the rest of the ACC has done. Really, in their out of conference schedule, we can check our inbox here. Just scouting reports. Take a look at the ACC standings here. So Georgia Tech, number two in the country. Well, where are they? They're undefeated still. 13 and 0. Wow. 3 and 0 on the road. Uh, so, looks like whew, pretty tough ACC this year. Georgia Tech number 2, UNC number 8, Syracuse at 12, Florida State at 9, Miami at 15. Well, the ACC looking like it might be a uh, a bit of a gauntlet here. We've done well at home. We've we've taken care of bad teams on the road. Uh, but we're going to have to play some of these good teams on the road. We're going to lose probably three, four, maybe even five uh, conference games here. It'll be real interesting to see how this turns out. It, depending on schedule, if we play all of those ranked teams on the road, uh, I can't see us not losing at least three of them. So here we go to, and here we go to Duke. Uh, just because they're not ranked, they're still a good team. And they're at Cameron Indoor. So, uh, this could certainly be our first ACC loss. I would prefer it not be. I think we're a better team than them. Uh, but not not so much better that we can't lose at their place. And we do by 11. And now we got a team incident. So, we eat our first loss of the year in the ACC. And that's exactly the time that uh, Sonny Dearborn wants to mouth off about Joey Shannon. All right, Sonny. Sonny, the senior shooting guard, who's not getting any playing time whatsoever, wanting to mouth off. You know, we just can't have that. We'll suspend him once. If he does that again, we're just going to kick him off. I'm not dealing with that. It's ridiculous. I'm trying to win a national championship here, Sonny Dearborn. I'm not going to let you screw it up. All right, 14 and 3, 4 and 1 in conference. Getting on to the middle of January here. Now we got to go on the road to play Virginia Tech. All right, Beach Bear, glad to have you back. I was trying to to remember uh, a couple of, it seems like a couple of times over the last decade, uh, UNC's had guys that were like sixth men, but they turned out to be uh, like really highly rated NBA prospects. Uh, I feel like they just had one a year or two ago. Uh, but I feel like they've done it a couple of times, so I was just I was kind of comparing that to 
the situation that we've got here with White. So we're headed on the road to play the Hokies. Uh, this one might be tough. Woo, four points, but Joey Shannon with 29 drops the hammer on the Hokies and the Louisville Cardinals move on to 15-3, and 5-1 and one in conference. So we're doing good now. Yeah, who are those UNC guys? Uh, I feel like the first one was like a big, smooth, power forward that could that had some range. And then last year they had a, I think it was the guard that had some injury problems. Maybe it was a, I think he was a lockdown defender, really explosive. So like I got these guys in my head, but the names aren't coming to me at all. Yeah, little beard. This is the same college basketball save. We're in 2042. So we've been doing this for like 23, 24 seasons now, I think. Oh, Miami. The Hurricanes in the Ville. About to throw down on the hardwood. Uh, we got the home court advantage here. Need to make sure that we make it count for something. Don't let Miami come in here and steal one from us. We're going to have enough trouble winning this year in the ACC. Uh, we got to win. We got to protect this court. Protect your home court, Louisville. Just like that, 13 points. Tyler, Shannon, Wright, all day, every day. Those three guys, my word. They're so young. See, like if those guys are juniors and seniors, I would say 100% this is a national championship caliber team. With them being sophomores and freshmen, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. All right. Uh, Beach Bear, close your eyes. <laughs> Thanks, Beard. I really appreciate it. Glad to hear that you're enjoying it on YouTube and Twitch. Uh, make sure that you know, you're know you subscribed and following and all that good stuff. It sounds like you are, but I'm really glad to have you here live uh, so we can chat a little bit. Uh, but also to Beach Bear, I'm really sorry for what might be about to happen here. Uh, so yeah, we're going to try to take this uh, at least until hopefully I can win a national championship with Louisville. Ideally, it would be tonight. Uh, if that's the case, we'll just keep going. But I'd like to get them to a national championship, if at all possible, uh, before college basketball 2021 drops. Uh, because obviously when that happens, you know we're going to move on to the new title. But we're about to get the Tar Heels and the Cardinals. Whoa. A lot of history. A lot of history in these two programs. Uh, but let's see who pulls it off in 2042. That'd be your Ville, Shannon Alexander and Sherry. So sorry about that, Beach Bear. Uh, had to do it. I was at home. Uh, they they looked at us wrong. We just had to run them out of the gym. Uh, that sort of thing happens. I'm sure if we have to go and play uh, in the Dean Dome, y'all still play in the Dean Dome, right? Uh, if we got if we got to go to UNC, I'm sure that uh, they'll probably return the favor. Maybe we'll keep an eye on it. We'll keep an eye on it for you. We'll clear out the inbox here and then take a look at what the rest of our schedule looks like. Yeah, it happens. It's all right. So on the road at Florida State, that's going to be a brutal game. On the road at Miami. On the road at North Carolina. I mean, this is just a brutal schedule coming down coming down the, the wire here. Look at that. Brandon Tyler. And Joey Shannon with the huge player impact estimates. And this is what's terribly concerning. Look at Cherry with that. I mean, he's just not impacting the game. I mean, you could see it in just from watching who's continuously uh, our top performers. What's going on here? Sometimes I forget to look through these GPAs throughout the season. Every now and then. We got to get them to hit the books. I don't want to have any ineligible players, certainly. Doesn't do any good to get guys to commit to your school if they can't stay on the court. So if you got to sacrifice a little bit of development for uh, a little bit of grades, I'm always willing to do that. 
Yeah, the Dean Smith Center. You don't mind the Wolf Pack, really? Interesting. So seventeen and three in the first twenty games. I mean, you, you can't ask for much better. A little seven and one start here in the ACC. Uh, it's good to start off strong because we're we got an absolutely brutal second half of a conference season here. Uh, starting off with maybe the toughest game on the road against Florida State, number four team in the country, uh, the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. This one's probably going to be tough. Probably going to be tough. The Cardinals and the Seminoles. Oh, yeah! Look at that. Now, see, that's what happens when Cherry plays. Uh, he played well. He was one of our leaders, and we took a 12-point win on the road against Florida State Seminoles, against the number four Florida State Seminoles. So that's a massive win. Right after that win, my phone starts going crazy with ESPN notifications. I think ESPN may be watching the stream, guys. Uh, anyway, huge win there against Florida State. So uh, that'll help us out if we want to limit it. If we want to limit our losses in the ACC, uh, winning at Florida State, that's certainly one way to do it. Still got a handful of, of really tough games left. Uh, now, Wake Forest, not a great team. So you would hope, you know, we, what we gained there playing Florida State, you hope you don't turn around and give it back here against the Demon Deacons. And, of course, we do. You know, as soon as I speak a little bit of common sense, we go and drop a, a just terrible game like that. So, you know, we're 18-4, 8-2, probably the record that we should have at this point. I just would have rather those two games have been flipped in their results. Uh, wouldn't make me feel as miserable about what we just did there on the road. Looked like we had like one player have a decent game and the rest of the team just checked out. So, But like I said, not shocking. Certainly not shocking. You're going to have some clunkers on the road in conference. Doesn't matter how good you are. Unless you've got a really, really experienced team, and even then it can happen. So, you know, you take your lumps through the season. You, you get excited if you if you pick up some of those uh, killer road wins. Uh, hopefully, you don't have any bad losses at home, and then you get on a neutral court and you see what it's all about. That's what we're gonna do here. We're through January. Uh, we're blazing on toward the postseason. Should be 18 and 5. <laughs> no, 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 no. We got the right record. We'll see what happens when we head to UNC. I think you got a, you've got a chance. Like, don't leave the stream. You've got a chance for your revenge. Uh, it's going to be coming up in the next handful of games. We're going to head to UNC. But not tonight. Tonight we are playing the Notre Dame Fighting Irish at home. Looks like they're having a pretty mediocre type season. Uh, we should be able to fend them off easily. 31 points, Alexander, Cherry, and Wright. All right, so that felt good. <laughs> you drop the bad game uh, on the road there, and then you come back home and you do what you do. And now we got Pitt. You know, their, their record looks all right, but then you look at their conference record, and it looks like trash. So they must have beat up on a bunch of... <laughs> directional state techs in the out of conference because the ACC is just beating them down uh, we ought to do the same here at home we'll see if we can send the Panthers packing oh my god 67-39 I, I don't know how do you score 39 points in a college basketball game you run in the four corners I mean I don't want to bad mouth the four corners here with Beach Bear in the room but uh, 39 points for real. God, look at Tulane. Still, still rocking. I wonder, wonder if Nebraska's done anything. I wonder if my couple of years there you know, got them any kind of foothold in the Big Ten. All right, so we had three players in the preseason on the Norton. None of them made the final 30. So it's not surprising because White's on the bench. It's not surprising with uh, Cherry not having great production. Uh, I thought that the third one was Chris Wright, so I'm a little bit surprised at that. But if I had to imagine, we've just got a 
a pretty good spread of talent. So, you know, no one player is getting to stand out. And that's alright. 20 and 4. 10 and 2 in conference. Well, we got eight more conference games. ACC runs a long conference season. Number two in the country. I, last I checked, we were also number two in the RPI. Whew, who was that? <laughs> Did y'all see that? Uh, anyway, all right, so now another one of these tough road games. Headed down to play Miami. They're 14th in the country. The Miami Hurricanes. We got them at home. Let's see, let's see if we can steal another one on the road. Definitely having a good year. They're 18 and 6 over in all. Uh, only 8 and 5 in the ACC so far. But they pick up the big win over the Cardinals here, 80 to 73. Uh, so, like I said, I figured at least three, uh, maybe four or five losses here in this ACC schedule. And we might have another one here. All right, Beach Bear. Time to get hyped. I don't know what UNC does to get hyped, but, you know, do whatever UNC does. <laughs> Y'all go out and do like a Jordan pose or something. I, I don't know what UNC does, but uh, here at Louisville, we throw up the L's, get some go cards, C-A-R-D-S, C-A-R-D-S, go cards, go. Louisville and North Carolina. Can North Carolina exact some revenge out of the Cardinals, or do we sweep them for the season? No, the Tar Heels got them, 71-63. to They get their revenge. Beach Bear gets to dance around chat. Uh, he gets bragging rights until we get to the ACC tournament. Uh, so, yeah, I figured UNC would have some MJ hype. Uh, maybe some James Worthy hype, you know, throw on the goggles and run around. I, I don't know what they do, but, but they got the win there. Whatever they did, it worked. Uh, and now we got to go on the road here, back-to-back uh, -back losses, and the season is not over yet because now here we go on the road to NC State. Uh, can't get out of the state of North Carolina. Hopefully we can pick up at least one win there, but they're having a pretty good year. Uh, certainly, certainly nothing guaranteed here. Five-point loss. Can't get over that hump. ACC is tough this year, and that's our fifth loss in conference. We still got five games to go. Uh, we've still, I think we've still got some tough ones to go. So, drops us to 10 and 5 in conference play, and now we do thankfully get a home game. Unfortunately, it's against the number six nationally ranked Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. So. Really, really counting on the, you know, whoever watches down over the, the home team. You know, if they don't win, it's a shame. Pick, pick it up. Let's get back on a winning track here. Knock off Georgia Tech. There we go. Eight points. Cherry leading the way, and he had eight assists. So, nice little game there out of Ailes Cherry. Uh, gets us back on the winning track, back up to 11 and 5 in conference. Uh, we're coming down the wire, folks. We got four conference games left. We need to check out those standings. And we get another home game against another top 10 team in Syracuse. So here we are. We're in a three way tie with Syracuse and North Carolina for third. Uh, Florida State actually leading the way at 12 and 3 in conference and Georgia Tech at 11 and 4 even after we beat them uh, so i mean just just a lot of talent in this ACC this year it's been a tough tough conference season so if we want to stay in the running we've got to protect home court and we've done a good job of it so far, but man, I, I don't know how you go through this entire home season without dropping one against the type of quality opponents. Uh, and Syracuse certainly has a chance coming in here to, to topple us at home. But they can't get it done. We prevail. Joey Shannon with a huge, huge game. Just filled up the stat sheet. And the Cardinals, 22-7. 12 and 5 
on the year. Three games left. Let's see. Let's see who they are. Yeah, Duke's struggling. Duke is certainly not up there in the top tier of this ACC uh, by any means. All right, let's see. Check the standings. Whew. We're now in sole possession of third place, but Florida State is still two games out there. Uh, Georgia Tech still one game ahead of us. Take a look here at the final three games of the season. It's going to be at Clemson, Boston College at home, at Pitt. We could very easily go, I don't think we're going one and two, but we could very easily go two and one here. Hopefully, we win all three, because Clemson and Pitt, neither one are very good. Uh, but of course, Wake Forest wasn't very good either, and we lost there. So all we really need to do is pick up at least one of these on the road. Let's go ahead and get it done here against Clemson. No, they beat us by 10. So Tyler and Wright tried, um, but... Lost to a bad Clemson team there on the road. And now it's all going to come down to holding off Boston College at home and trying to go and steal one um, on the road at Pitt. I can't wait to get on a neutral court and see what we do. I mean, you saw what we did in the preseason tournament. Smoked Arizona State when they were number six. Still in a good place. It, it's still like anything can happen in the rest of this season. You know, when you still win an ACC tournament, we can still go to the Final Four. We can still win a national championship with this team. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't call us the favorite by any means, but I think we should be. We should be a two or three seed, depending on how the ACC goes. We could be a one. The ACC tournament. I mean, come on, let's get into this postseason, guys. I'm ready for it. All right, Boston College, 11 and 6 on the year. A little senior night. Get some senior night up in here for David Williams. Show, uh, show him what he meant four years at the Ville. We appreciate you, David. He pops up there with 16 points on his, uh, I don't know what you call it. I mean, it's senior night. You know, on his way out the door, the Yum Center just dropped 16 you know, for old time's sake. Got to love to see the senior get a win. Uh, have a big scoring game. It's always fun. Barry Haywood. I know, I'd like to have some guys named Barry Haywood. Bo Click. Terrell Sweetwine. Why are these guys rec I need to be recruiting where they're recruiting. All right, so we just got the one road game left at Pitt now. We're not quite an hour and a half into the stream, so doing pretty good to try to uh, not go too far over an hour and a half here and get an entire season in. All right, so number five, headed into Pittsburgh. They've had a rough season, uh, but but we've been pretty average on the road. You know, we've done great at home. We could, um, we might be undefeated at home. I'd have to check. Um, we did great on a neutral court, but we can't win a game on the road to save our lives here. Ah, oh, Pittsburgh gets us, gets us into the win column on the road to close out the season. So we finish off that ACC season 14 and six, not too shabby. I've got to think that finishes us up at number three in the conference. Actually, we finished 
in a four-way tie for second place at 14 and 6. Florida State wins the regular season championship. Georgia Tech lost every game down the stretch, fell to 12 and 8. My word. Interesting ACC regular season, guys. Very interesting. Now we head into the postseason. This is where we got to show them who we are, Louisville. Let's show them. Let's hang an ACC banner. Let's hang a Final Four banner. Let's win that national championship, baby. We, we got to win nine more games. Nine more games. It's like we're having a... I don't know if y'all, if how much this mic picks up, but it sounds like upstairs I got dog fights going on. Our puppy's just losing his mind. Yeah, I want to hang the everything banner. I want to hang the All-American banner. I want to hang the NCAA banner. Uh, I want to hang all the banners. All right. Kicking off postseason play with Pittsburgh. All right. Want a little bit of a rematch here. We just beat them at their place. Now we're going to be playing in the ACC tournament on a neutral court. And we doesn't change anything. Still an 18-point win for the good guys. Uh, now, you know, Dukes might have been struggling earlier. They're making a push. They're into the ACC semifinals. So the Cardinals get another crack at the Blue Devils. Once again on a neutral court and woo go home duke you're not on our level this year guys get out get move it uh so here we go florida state and louisville florida state won the regular season acc um you know we'll see what happens here joe clax i think i went after joe claxton didn't i but florida state obviously very good team uh, this should be a battle for which ACC team gets a one seed and who ends up with a two seed. But first of all, it's a banner. We want the trophy. Bring it home to the Ville, the Cardinals, and the Seminoles in the ACC championship. Louisville, Louisville. Yes, sir. Ten-point win. Get out, Florida State. We're running this ACC this year. It's all about the Cardinals. All about the Cardinals. Let's check that box score because I couldn't see it. I was celebrating too much. Uh, Joey Shannon and Brandon Tyler, 37 of our 78 points. Tyler chipped in nine rebounds. David Williams, eight and eight. Uh, Chris Wright didn't have a great game. Looks like he was in some foul trouble. Uh, Cherry only played 13 minutes with only two fouls. I don't know if that's an injury. What happened there? Is he hurt? Oh, players are clearing for draft. Uh, this is an important one. Let's see if anybody's headed pro. Oh, shit. Wow. So we lose Tyler, the center, Cherry, the point guard, Garnett, the shooting guard, and Harrington, the other point guard. That's our entire backcourt. Cherry, Garnett, and Harrington. Well, I mean, we didn't lose Shannon, though, right? So Garnett's gone. Cherry and Harrington are both gone, but we'll still have Joey Shannon. Uh, we brought in the freshman. Uh, so, whew, looks like uh, we might need a might need ourselves another guard here. Uh, losing Tyler, that's not a not a shock. Number twenty two nationally, he's having himself a decent year. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of surprised Harrington's leaving. He was ranked twenty six, so this is the first guy I've ever seen ranked outside the top twenty five that left as a freshman. So that's actually interesting. Garnett was at least yeah, he was number twenty five. 
yet Joey Shannon's sticking around. All right, so be it. Let's let's see if we can go out. Uh, let's let's see here. So he wants to play, but I was I was a little bit worried that White would be getting pissed off at me, but I guess he's getting enough time that he's good to go. So you know, we're still gonna have options next year. We can still play. We can let White play some too. Uh, we'll still have, we'll have Shannon and uh, the recruit. What was his name? I don't, Map. A Lamont map, right? Yeah. So I don't know which of them will be the point guard, but one of them can play point guard. Uh, between the three of them, they can they can figure that out. We'll be all right. And then we can let uh, Porter and and Wright really share time at the three. We're, we're, we'll be good to go. It's a little bit surprising to lose that many guards, but we'll be all right. Uh, Norton finalists, we're not in that. Blah, blah, blah. Let's check out this selection show. Shoot, I didn't even check to see if Cherry got hurt. Only playing 13 minutes and only having two fouls. I, I don't have any... Unless he, like, picked up two fouls immediately and then played all 13 minutes in the second half. I don't know. All right. Oh, these are playing games. <clears throat> so the number one overall seed is actually Villanova. Then we got Auburn with the two. That's right. Syracuse a three. The Arizona Wildcats a four. There's your Kentucky Wildcats at an 11. The Louisville Cardinals playing in Lexington, Kentucky. That's only a short little drive down uh, 64. So Louisville grabs the one seed in Lexington. Minnesota Golden Gophers a two. We did lose on the road to Minnesota earlier in the year, so uh, not giving us the friendly two seed there. Xavier with a three. UCLA a four. St. Mary's. NC State's in this region. And a, a tough look at this. Our potential second round matchup is in between Miami, who was a top 10 team for half of the year, or Tulane, our Tulane Green Wave. Man, they were not forgiving at all when they set up that region. All right, so there's your Atlanta region, and in Denver, VCU, UC, New Mexico, and Stanford. This is set up to be a heck of a tournament. Let's check and make sure our point guard's not hurt real quick. He is. Broke his arm? <sighs> All right, well, that's not what you want to have happen going into the NCAA tournament, guys. Uh, not at all. So, Els Cherry is done for the season. That means we've got to bring in the freshman Harrington to be our starting point guard. Now we got to find uh, something off the bench. So I guess that should be Garnett. Uh, I mean, I don't know that we were winning the championship anyway. But uh, this isn't exactly what you want to see. It's still trying to play him. Get him out of the rotation. Get him way down here. All right. So what we want to have happen here. So we'll get white in. There, so we've got Harrington, Shannon, and White. We need a uh, where's who else gonna run the point? Oh, shit. Ailes Cherry broke his arm in the, in the ACC championship game. We won the ACC championship, but he broke his arm, he's out for the rest of the year. So, Kenny, oh, god, he's terrible. As far as passing and handling, Joey Shannon. Joey Shannon's going to get the rest of those point guard minutes. Uh, 
Man, that sucks. And we got to find a way. Hold on, here's what we'll do. Um. Right, you're going to run the point here. And Garnett's going to be the shooting guard. Same thing. You run the point. And Garnett runs the shooting guard. No. No, that's not right at all. There we go. Oh, so that was white. Alexander fills in for the inside guys, and then we move Garnett in to the rotation. All right, so that's how we're going to approach this NCAA tournament. Um, that's a serious blow to our national championship hopes, but uh, yeah, anything's still possible. I still think, I still think we get out there. Uh, but we do have a tough road, you know. We either got Miami or Tulane in the second round. Uh, we could go home early. As long as we don't go out as a one seed. I just don't want to pull the full Agalia. At least we would have some kind of explanation with our point guard breaking his arm. But uh, on a neutral court, I fully expect to beat the Wright State Raiders with this Louisville team. And we do 26 points. Joe Shannon had a nice little 21-point game there. So now let's see. Who do we get? The Miami Hurricanes. It's basically a top 25 team in the second round. Yeah, Miami beat Tulane. So here we are as a one seed. Uh, and we're basically playing a top 25 team in the second round without our starting point guard. All right. <laughs> no gimmies in the NCAA tournament, folks. The Hurricanes and the Ville. Ooh! We squeaked by. <laughs> I mean, a win's a win, but God bless. Could you imagine if you're sitting there watching your one seed play the eight and you squeak by by two? Oh, God. There were some... Uh, there were some tense moments in Louisville there. But we made it past the second round. Uh, we're on to the Sweet 16. Uh, at this point, if the injury and the lack of depth caught up to us a little bit, it wouldn't be shocking. Uh, Chris, the other thing that happened, if you missed it, uh, we actually had four players turn pro. Brandon Tyler, the center, turned pro. And then uh, Cherry, Harrington, and Garnett. So three of our top four guards. Uh, we do keep Joey Shannon. Uh, but we're going to be a little bit light on guards next year. So a whole lot of bad happened while you were gone. But we, we hung a banner. We're still in the hunt here. It's going to be tougher now without Ailes Cherry. But uh, here we go. Taking on the UCLA Bruins. Pulled it out. Five-point win. Marching on into the Elite Eight. So we're getting by. We're getting by. And now, we're, I mean, every game is just going to be like pulling teeth at this point. We got to see if we can get past the Xavier Musketeers. Whew. It's crunch time, folks. You get to the Elite Eight, anything could happen. We could lose here, we could win it all, uh, and anything at all in between. So, throw your L's up, cross your fingers, cross your toes, uh, eat your Wheaties. The Cardinals and the Musketeers in the Elite Eight for the right to go to the Final Four, and they blew us out of the gym. It all caught up to us right there. White Garnett tried to carry something as freshman. David Williams had himself a game, but Brandon Tyler, really nowhere to be found. Jason Alexander, nothing doing. Uh, Chris Wright, nothing doing. And we go home. We made the Elite Eight, and we're going home. So, ACC champions made the Elite Eight, and it's all over, you know. No point guard, 
no go. And we're going to have a similar issue next year uh, because we did not actually recruit a point guard. I was under the impression that we had a couple of them that might be sticking around for three or four years, and it turned out they both left. So, uh, we can go and take a look. We can go and take a look at that box score. Uh, I mean, not necessarily foul trouble. I mean, I guess Tyler was in a little bit of foul trouble. It's just really lack of production. I mean, he, he went two for nine. Couldn't buy a three-pointer. I don't know why our power forward's the only one trying to. Uh, Dalton Hill White honestly played the best game. I mean, the way that guy's producing in the minutes that he's getting, he may have to start next year. I mean, Tyler played well on the on the boards, but I mean, just five points can't get it done inside. Not hitting free throws. Not that three points would have made any kind of difference here, but uh, we just got run out of the gym. That's why you got to have a really talented point guard. And we had a we had a good point guard. He got hurt. Uh, we had a. I mean, we did have. I don't want to say Harrington wasn't talented. He certainly was, but he, he was a freshman still. Uh, you need a good talented upperclassman point guard unless you're just got like next level talent so let us as usual take a look here through the ncaa tournament in greensboro the villanova wildcats fall to the arizona wildcats in the one four matchup and uab takes out number two auburn and uab is going to the final four in lexington we all know what happened xavier over louisville in atlanta Georgia Tech, the ACC rematch here. Georgia Tech knocks out Florida State, but then they fall to the Oregon Ducks. So the Oregon Ducks are into the Final Four. And in Denver, it's the VCU Rams over the Cincinnati Bearcats. Final Four, UAB versus Xavier, Oregon versus VCU. The 1-2-3-6 matchup. Uh, can't say I've seen it all that often, but that's what you got. Yeah, uh, not having Ailes Cherry really hurt. I was saying that you know, early in the season, you remember me saying we needed big games out of him later in the season. We needed him to develop and come on uh, if we were going to win. Uh, having him break his arm and go out is the exact opposite of what we needed to have happen. So that's what gets you bounced in the Elite Eight. Certainly not the first team to ever have their dreams crushed by injury. Uh, but even if he was healthy, there were certainly no guarantees. So we just move on. We get past it. Uh, we see what this recruiting class coming in looks like. I think it's going to be pretty solid. Well, we've really got some crazy talent at the small forward position. Let's we'll see how this how this final four goes. The Oregon Ducks smoked Xavier. That was the championship game. So UAB fell to Xavier, and then Oregon beat VCU. But Oregon smoked Xavier in that championship game. So the Oregon Ducks, your NCAA champions in 2042. Let's get to this award. Show. All right. So here are the individual awards. Kareem Hayes from Xavier actually won the Norton. There's Tulane. Ryan Dudley. A national award. Interesting to see. Joe Claxton. I swear we went after Claxton. Ryan Dudley, the second team All-American. Very, very interesting. In the ACC. Alright, so Florida State wins Coach of the Year. Uh, Anthony Hurd, Defensive Player and Freshman of the Year. And Joe Claxton, Player of the Year. First teamers. Joey Shannon was a first teamer. So it's really interesting. He's the only first team All-Conference player I got. And he's the only one that's going to be coming back next year. So I don't know exactly how that works. Uh, but I'll take it. I'll certainly take it. Second teamers, Brandon Tyler made the second team. That's good to see. So we got a couple of uh, all-conference players there. Always good to get a little bit of recognition. And it'll be interesting to see how where all these guys get drafted. You know, losing four guys like that, hopefully they're uh, filling up that draft board. Because if they go pro and don't get drafted, that's going to be really frustrating for us.
Got a little season review here. Ooh, one of our coaches retired. Oh, so we didn't make the Final Four. That's fine. Succeeded, succeeded. Everything else did well. 84 to 88, so we're moving up there in school prestige. That's certainly good to see. Getting close to 90, we ought to be able to go about go after just about any player in the country. Uh, let's see which of our staff members retired. And it's going to be our practice coach. Oh, Javon Murray. He's an 81 at recruiter. Go ahead and extend him out. Thomas Kelly. I think we want to negotiate with him as well. Yeah. All right, so now we just need a practice coach. Oh, hold on. First is uh, job hiring. We're not going anywhere else, obviously. There's no other school I would entertain. Oh, Alabama on probation. Cal on probation. Creighton, a lot of jobs open. Georgia on probation, Illinois, Michigan, Nebraska still looking for a coach. That's the weirdest thing. It's like you had a decent coach and you fired him like a bunch of dummies. Syracuse available. Virginia, Washington State. Tons of jobs available. Uh, a lot of teams looking for a coach this year, but we are very much not on the market. <laughs> yeah, whole bunch of crooked teams. It's looking like uh, the MEAC or MAAC or whatever we're running in the NCBA, where uh, you know Justin's got Manhattan and everybody's up there just paying players just to be doing it or whatever. Uh, that, that's what it looks like we got going on here. All right, let's get on into the staff hiring. Oh, UNC was on probation. I missed that. All right, so we want. Second assistance. He's a first assistant. He's a third assistant. Interesting. Where's a first? Alright, so I don't ever know. Or should I go with the better mix over here? Let's go for Hartfield. What's he making? Twenty six a year. Yeah, let's let's offer him like seventy five. See if we can make that happen. Oh. There we go. All right, the coaching staff is filled out. Skip on past this. We've got $300,000 to spend on recruiting. The budget is just insane. $575,000. Goodness gracious. Still got some interesting stuff coming up here, guys. We're going to have... We're going to be able to ask for improved facilities. And then we're going to get through this offseason. See if we have any transfers out. Hopefully we don't. Uh, but then we get to see how these incoming freshmen look, and we get to see where our four players who just turned pro, as well as the senior Williams, uh, where exactly they get drafted. Hopefully Williams gets drafted. But you would certainly think the four underclassmen who have declared should be drafted. Upgrade those facilities. Come on, give it to us. We're up to 88 prestige. We need A-plus facilities. Give it to me. Nah. Denied. Once again. Let's take a look. One one last look here at the school info.
So 88 team prestige, 88 conference prestige. Facilities are down to a C plus. You guys have got to be you're you're kidding me with this. We're at 88. We got C plus facilities. You're killing me. They let these facilities go to hell. We should be at least an A minus. Golly. I think it was a C plus when I took over. I got them to give it to me the first year, and it bumped up a little, and now it's falling by. It falls over time, so you got to keep asking for it to keep it up. Well, how do they not give it to me? That's crazy. The they'll give me budget. If they give me much more budget, I could imp I could build a new stadium myself. Let me just build it myself, guys. All right. Yeah, there, I think there probably is some randomization. I, I wonder if there's also not uh, some type of uh, delay. Like you, you just upgraded facilities, you can't do it again for three or four years or something like that. Uh, my guess is, you know, the AI didn't request it consistently enough, so it would probably take, you know, 10, 12 years of me asking for it every year to build it back up where it ought to be. Uh, I'm sure you can get it there over time. It's just not going to happen in my first three years. So... Uh, uh, something, and I don't know exactly what, maybe you guys can figure it out, something gives me the impression that maybe the AI was requesting budget increases. I don't know. I mean, just a theory. Yeah, I've had budget increases. Um, and, and it is a little bit random, and I, I've never seen, you know, more than one yes every four or five years uh, but I have had it alright let's we'll see what we got skip to summer and blah 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 so we got six scholarships open with four players going early let's check these recruit class rankings coming in at number four the Louisville Cardinals we'll go and buy some reports we do need a little bit of money this year, but we should have more than enough. Grab the gold, south, east, and national. Stay basic everywhere else. We're still going to have 150000 We can go ahead and throw in that international basic report. God, man. That's a, such a tiny... Well, we must have lost transfers, too. All right, so there's map. I mean, the guys that we've got are talented. It's just we don't have many of them. So, map and Shannon, extremely good guards, but we don't have any other guards. That's the only two that we have. Uh, Wright, the senior. Porter, the freshman. White, the sophomore. Extremely talented small forwards. Uh, there's a junior and a freshman at the power forward position. John Carter, definitely looking like the star there. And then Chris Marshall is the only center that we have on the roster. Uh, four guys going pro early will really get you. We didn't have anybody transfer out. That was just purely uh, guys going pro early. We don't have walk-ons anymore. But you figure, you know, we lost a center. So add Brandon Tyler back there. We're looking good on the inside. Lost three guards. Add those guys back. You know, we'd be just fine. It wouldn't even be fair. If we had those four players back, this wouldn't even be fair. And we've got... Three, four, five. We got six guys that are four and a half star or better right now. Right now, six. At, you know, Cherry was there. You, you know, Tyler was there. So we would have had eight guys that were four and a half star or better. It would not have been fair whatsoever. Not even a little bit. So, yeah, uh, and you hate to see that. You don't want just because a guy goes pro. Like you don't want him to get hurt. It would have been nice, it, one way or the other. Like if you're gonna break your arm, then we get to keep him. Uh, if he's if he's healthy and, and he goes pro, then let's at least like get to get to see what he can do in the tournament. But alas, didn't work out. So what I think we'll have to do here is let Joey Shannon run the point this year, unless Map uh, is just an exquisite ball handler and passer. Uh, Shannon. So Cherry, I think, was like eight. Uh, eight and four on his passing and handling and i think shannon's like seven and four so i mean he was he was nearly as good at cherry at those skills so if map can't handle the ball shannon can certainly move down and take over those duties 
uh, we can let map play a little bit unless we get some kind of crazy walk on and then uh, we can have white swinging down so we got a bunch of walk on guards they're all crap every walk on we got is crap no we can get rid of all of that get the summer travel set up obviously uh, we'll just let the AI do it because it always gives us all five regional camps as well as Indie Elite which is exactly what I wanted to do uh, now that's going to bring us to June 26, guys. We got through an entire year. We're not even we an hour, 55 minutes. By the time we look at the draft and I wrap up, we're going to be right at two hours. This was pretty much perfect. Still got $141,000 to recruit with. That's going to be very solid. Uh, but we're going to have to do a whole heck of a lot of recruiting this year. Got to fill out the depth on this team. That is for sure. So... See what happened in this NBA draft. Georgia Tech had the number one overall pick. Neil King from Auburn. Did I recruit him? Name does not sound familiar to me. So, Ailes Cherry is the first Cardinal off the board here at number 18. And then right almost back to back. Oh, three out of four. Cherry goes 18. Then a guy from Villanova. Then Nate Garnett, the backup shooting guard. Went at 20, then Brandon Tyler at 21, and Corey Harrington at 23. So we had we had four out of six, four out of six, all right there in the middle of the first round. That's pretty interesting. Let's see if David Williams got drafted. Uh, a couple more Auburn guys: Kenny Smith, Pete Harris. The names still aren't sounding familiar. Justin Logan sounds familiar. He was the big power forward that I recruited. I definitely remember him. Uh, and David Williams did not get drafted. So, you know, we, we have this run here of four out of six. And these are guys, I, I recruited Cherry, I recruited Garnett, I recruited Tyler, I recruited Harrington. I recruited all four of those guys. Uh, so, obviously the talent that we're bringing in is, is for real. But uh, that's the draft. That was your 2041-2042 season. We won the ACC championship. We made the Elite Eight. Uh, we did not have a point guard that could get us there. Cherry got hurt, and we fell short. So we've got a very promising core coming back, but we lost all of our depth to the pro draft. So uh, next year might be very similar to, to what happened last year, and I have about the same expectations. If we can stay healthy, maybe we can push into that Final Four and compete for the championship, uh, but uh, – the wrong injury at the wrong time and we'll be out of luck but uh, guys i hope you all really enjoyed the stream i enjoyed bringing it to you i'm having a blast trying to get these louisville cardinals to the promised land uh i'm gonna wrap it up there hopefully we'll be back within the next couple of days i do want to bring you all some draft day sports pro football sometime within the next week so that might have to be the next stream but uh, you know i'm not gonna let the louisville cardinals get away get too far away from me uh appreciate y'all stopping by i hope you enjoyed it half as much as i did and i'll see all of y'all next time